What I'm going to talk to you about today, if I can ever get to the thing, is um, networks, platforms and earnings growth. Because what, we're, what we um, said as a theme for this section is um, capital preservation, sort of a short summary. And I'm going to talk to you about uh, capital preservation and how it relates to uh, networks, platforms and earnings growth. We, uh, so for a moment of uh, family feud, we surveyed 100 fund managers and asked them whether they'd buy this stock. The top answer was, no, it's set for a retracement. Second top answer was, damn, I wish I'd bought that PA. And the third top answer was, winter is coming, sell JB Hi-Fi. There's been a lot of talk in recent uh, months about Amazon's arrival. Uh, we own three of these stocks in our global portfolio. Uh, not Netflix, but um, I'll call them the <coughs> FAR, for want of a better word, uh, Facebook, Amazon, and Alphabet. Um, and in our portfolio, they make up 32% of the portfolio. So this is a high conviction position in these tech stocks. Um, we firmly believe that if you really think something's going to make a difference over the next five years, you own a lot of it. You don't just say, well, I... Uh, Market weight was 1.5%, I'm going to overweight it and I'm going to hold 1.7%. Today I'm going to talk about Facebook. Um, uh, Facebook's actually our largest position in our, um, in our fund at 12, a bit under 12%. And really what that says there is that the traditional numbers are only part of the story. So um, what is a network? What is Facebook? Um, just let's start by a, a quick poll here. <clears throat> Who here has never used Facebook? Wow, that is huge. Like, we did this in Brisbane yesterday and two people put up their hands. So what's the difference between Sydney and Brisbane? Um, who here uses Facebook once a month? Seriously, that's the number? Who uses it daily? Okay, that's a pretty, that's a pretty substantial number. Okay, so <clears throat> there's 1.9 billion monthly active users and growing in Facebook. So um, you just got to think about whether you're in the minority or the majority there if you say that you've never used it. Um, it's a bit challenging for those who've never used it. It's like a fund manager. Remember when JB Hi-Fi listed? Um, we went on a, on a tour of, of JB Hi-Fi stores and uh, the majority of fund managers said, this is crap, like concrete floors, yellow walls, guys with studs selling stuff. Like, that'll never be a good business. It was actually our, one of our best money-making opportunities because they missed what really was key to, a, um, to a, a value proposition to customers. They just loved cheap stuff, sold to them by people who really understood what they were talking about. And so it is with Facebook. So this is a platform. Uh, it, if you think about what it stands for, it's actually giving you curated content and curated advertising. So it knows after you use it for a while, and all of you who are using it daily, my goodness, that was a lot of people, um, it's watching what you do. There's a Facebook robot in the back there, and after you've used it a while, it starts to understand what you like, and it starts curating the content. It used to be a news feed, hey? You just, your friends would post stuff, and, and you'd look at that, and it's now morphing into content and advertising. And funnily enough, the ads are the things that you're actually interested in. Most of them are actually glued to their mobile phones. So look at the numbers that that's growing to. Monthly active Facebook users, now well over 1.5 billion out of 1.95 billion, are using it on mobile. There are 65 million businesses on Facebook who are effectively using Facebook instead of programming an app. So you know how expensive it is would be to <coughs> program your own app, get it in amongst all the real estate on somebody's mobile phone, very hard, they've got Facebook right there on the first bit, using it daily, this is the way that you cut through to this. So just think about for a moment the advertising opportunities. This is Kendall Jenner. Should I ask who knows who Kendall Jenner is? Two people, excellent, excellent. Three, excellent, excellent. So my 14-year-old daughter said, Dad, she's Kim Kardashian's stepsister. I said, and who's that again? Oh, it's Caitlyn Jenner's daughter. Okay, still haven't got me there. So what's important about this? Well, there's a number of years back where MySpace 
was the big social media thing. Remember when uh, Rupert Murdoch bought it? <clears throat> Over $500 million, later sold it for $35 million. Uh, that's not a good investment, <clears throat> just in case you were wondering. Um, interestingly enough, in that period of time, Facebook was looking at its competitors and it didn't actually consider MySpace as a competitor. What it did consider a competitor was Instagram and WhatsApp because it took people away from their time on Facebook. 55 minutes a day is the average usage of Facebook out of eight hours of viewing in the US. Eight hours of media, 55 minutes. One in every five minutes on mobile is on Facebook. See, I can see people looking at their Facebook feeds now. They've got their heads down, clearly checking their, their mobile phones. I hope it's just checking the prices. <clears throat> A huge number of people, 15% of people on Facebook check their news feed 50 times or more a day. Now you know what your staff are doing. 25% check it 25 times a day. Back to this one. So what's important about this? Well, this is taken from her Instagram feed. She works on retention from Estee Lauder. She published this and that lipstick sold out immediately. I want you to think about the power of advertising through Facebook and Instagram that people aren't really considering when they think about this business as a long-term earnings growth business. Okay, so there's this huge number of users in the US. Like it's 160 million users in the US, but that leaves over a billion and a half outside of the US. And look at the opportunity here uh, in, click, yep in the rest of the world there. I mean, Australia's well up there at uh, 51%, that's 51% of people. And Facebook's on its way to take penetration from 31% globally to 38% ex-China. So we'll just leave China out, out of it for the moment. So there's still growth in users and they're out there working with companies to make it easier for the 30, in the US, 35% of SMEs do not have a website. This is a way you get a website. And look at all this software, just in case you thought Facebook, all that Facebook was, was just something that you pulled up on your mobile phone. These are software producers who produce apps that run in co as a, an open interface to Facebook to allow you to do various things as an advertiser with Facebook, whether it be publishing, analytics, monitoring, curation, tables and, and con sorry, tabs and contests. There's this whole ecosystem that's built up around Facebook supporting it because it's open architecture. That was one of the things why it took over MySpace, it just shot past it, is its open architecture basis. It's allowing users to work with other users and just sitting in the middle and helping it happen. In advertising, because this is what Facebook's really about, it's about income, and that's the sort of growth we're seeing in income over time, it's about reach, targeting, and return on investment. Reach, you know, geolocation is commoditized. It's about having enough users to make actual ads at scale work. Targeting, they know so much about you. My wife has a toy shop here in Double Bay, just in case you need presents to buy, end of Transvaal Avenue. You know how she advertises? She's got a little shop. She goes on her Facebook page around coming up to Christmas and she says, I want to send this ad, mobile phones, to women aged 35 to 65 who have children or grandchildren who are within three kilometres of my shop and I want that ad to appear before and after lunch when they're checking their Facebook page. Guess what happens? They come into the shop. Return on investment. That's the holy grail of advertising, to know what you spent turns into ads. I'll go back to that Kendall Jenner thing. One post, look at the result. The movement is all towards digital. Look at those numbers there, mobile um, <clears throat> internet. The, the eyeballs are all moving to uh, internet. You can see the, <coughs> excuse me, you can see the numbers. So <clears throat> in Facebook, they have, 10% um, uh, of the eyeballs, so you can see the, 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 the relationship in media. 
but they're only getting 5% of the revenue. In Australia, we bought REA on those sort of statistics. Most people were looking online for property, but only a fraction of the revenue was actually going towards that, that company. We said, all right, let's follow where the eyeballs are because the revenue will follow. Advertisers are realistic. They want to know they're getting their message through. This system allows you to prove that they're actually watching because the ROI is high. Not much has come out of TV yet. That's the opportunity. TV has been very resistant. Okay, so like this is a building earnings story. You can see the revenue going. The earnings have been slow to come up. That's why everybody's a bit worried about this and they're saying they're on high multiples. But it's not on such a high multiple if you think it can do 30% earnings growth per annum over the next five years. I mean, it's been much higher. Their sales growth has been up in the 50, 49% per annum for a number of years. It is slowing down. I mean, they've got a lot of penetration over those years. And so it is getting a little harder. But really, what, what I'm telling you is there is a power to these platform businesses to deliver value um, <coughs> excuse me, without the scale restrictions that apply to older style businesses. And the growth in users over time and engagement will convert into earnings. And earnings is, you know, in the long term, as I said in that little video clip before, is that's where prices follow in the long term, is on the earnings. And that's what really provides your client, clients with capital preservation.